Hello YouTubers and welcome back to another Generation Behind Hi-Fi video. In my last video, I did a deep dive into the construction quality of the KEF Q350 speakers. I went over their build quality of the cabinet, the TS parameters of the drivers, and examined the crossover components. If you'd like to see that video, check out my look inside video of the KEF Q350. But what's really on everyone's mind now is how do these speakers sound? And how do they compare to other speakers in this price range? Let's find out. I'm sure as some of you know inflation has been brutal these last few years and has touched just about every product we buy from the food we eat to the clothes we wear. But most of all, hi-fi equipment from some brands has seen some pretty dramatic price increases in the last 24 months. Honestly, I think the only thing inflation hasn't touched is those Arizona teas that you can still buy for 99 cents. So what does all this inflation mean? It means that your buying power is diminishing. In some cases, Speakers that were once considered affordable have ballooned in price so much that it's hard to make a case for their value. Maybe this is just me, but when it comes to selecting a set of bookshelf speakers that are going to be tasked with the job of being my front mains, then those speakers need to have at least a 6.5 inch driver in them to satisfy my base needs. There are very few exceptions to this rule, but in my opinion most well designed 6.5 inch drivers will provide enough bass for music listening to satisfy most people, as long as those speakers are placed in small to medium sized rooms. It has also been my experience that most speakers with at least a 6.5 inch driver in them don't need to rely on the subwoofer as much either. This is especially important for music listening. In my opinion, once you start setting the low pass filter on the subwoofer above 80 Hz, then the music can start to sound boomy and unnatural. Unfortunately, in today's market, it's getting harder and harder to find affordable bookshelf speakers that have 6.5 inch drivers in them from the major brands. Just to clarify, I'm not talking about the lesser known brands. I'm talking about the major brands that everyone has heard of. For example, Bowers & Wilkins recently revised their 600 series not too long ago, and their entry level 606 S3 bookshelf, which features a 6.5 inch driver, is now $1,100 per pair. I'm sure it's probably a great speaker, but what's the point of making an entry level speaker that isn't affordable? Maybe it's just me that's feeling this way, but I feel a lot of the well-known brands who have entry level lines are not as affordable as they once were, except for KEF. The KEF Q350, which has been on the market for a few years now, can still be found on sale quite regularly for $499 per pair. If you're looking for an affordable set of bookshelf speakers that have great bass for a 6.5 inch driver and an extremely large sound stage for a bookshelf, then the Q350 is a hard speaker to ignore when it's on sale. And here's why. For starters, the cabinet construction on the Q350 is pretty darn good for the money. The front baffle on the Q350 is 1.34 inches thick. That's unheard of at this price point. To put that in perspective, I recently reviewed a set of Focal Aria 906 speakers, which have an MSRP of $2,200 per pair, and the front baffle on those speakers is only three quarters of an inch thick. Obviously, you don't get a lot of bang for your buck from Focal. The bass driver that Kef uses in the Q350 is pretty good. The six and a half inch driver has a nice beefy motor structure, and the voice coil is vented under the spider to help keep the voice coil cool for those long listening sessions. On my bench, the bass driver measured very well and contains one of the key ingredients that make it such a great driver, and that's low inductance. Voice coil inductance is directly correlated with how good the sound quality will be from a driver. A driver with a lower inductance voice coil will sound better than one with a higher inductance voice coil with all other variables being equal. The reason for this is higher inductance is a major source for harmonic distortion. The tweeter in the Q350 has an aluminum dome with a neodymium magnet. The tangerine waveguide on the tweeter works in conjunction with the bass driver and rubber surround to create one large waveguide for the tweeter. When a high frequency wave is generated from the tweeter, it will smoothly roll off the cone of the bass driver which in turn improves the response of the tweeter. Even the rubber surround on the bass driver is designed not to interfere with the response of the tweeter. So what does all this technology mean? Well, you get a lot of trickle-down technology from CAF's higher-end speakers, 
which should add up to a great sounding speaker that can be had for a very reasonable price. Is the KEF Q350 perfect? Of course not, but I think KEF engineers make concessions in most of the right areas to deliver what I think is a great sounding product for an affordable price. So how do the KEF Q350 sound? I'm going to break this part up into two categories. Sound quality during movies and sound quality during music. What I love about the Q350 is that it shares the same Uni-Q driver array as its bigger brother, the Q750. This means you can get Q750 performance by pairing the Q350s with a quality subwoofer. I first set up the speakers in my living room system which consists of Rotel separates. The processor is a Rotel RSP1580 and the amplifier is a RMB1575. This room can be very challenging for bookshelf speakers to fill this room with adequate sound and bass because the kitchen, dining room, and living room are all in one large room. For the movie demo, I'll be pairing these speakers with my modified JBL550P subwoofer, which has a CSS SDX10 driver in it. And the center channel that you see will be turned off so I can get an idea how well these speakers do with dialogue from actors and actresses. For my first test, I put in my usual go-to movie, War of the Worlds starring Tom Cruise. What immediately caught my ear with the Q350 is the soundstage. Wow! If you were blindfolded listening to these speakers, I swear you would think the sound was coming from a much, much larger set of speakers. That's right, baby? I can't be the Waterman. There's nothing else down there. The Waterman doesn't run through here. Feel well, there's something down there, and it's moving. The dialogue coming from actors and actresses was crystal clear and easy to hear and understand. During action scenes, these speakers would image so well that it felt like I was on set, live during the filming of the movie. Every explosion where rubble came crashing down was detailed, authoritative, and lifelike. For a set of speakers that I only paid $500 for brand new, I was thoroughly impressed with the realism and detail that these speakers exhibited. In my opinion, these speakers are much more neutral sounding than the brighter Focal Aria 906 speakers that I reviewed last month. The Focal Aria 906 were a tiny bit better at imaging during movies than the Kefs, but the Focals are also considerably more expensive too. Even though the Focals are currently on sale for over 50% off, I would still choose the Kefs over them because I can use that extra money that I saved to purchase a very nice subwoofer. I think the reason the Focals do so well during movies is because they are rather bright sounding, which tricks the listener into thinking they are hearing more detail. The large soundstage that the KEF Q350 is produced during movies is impressive. I think the key to getting that large soundstage worthy of tower speakers is making sure you pair them with a quality subwoofer. My modified JBL 550P subwoofer which has a sealed enclosure and uses a more gradual roll off of 12 dB per octave blended beautifully with my Q350s, but this all boils down to what you, the listener, prefers. If you are a bass head that wants the ultimate impact during movie explosions, then a ported subwoofer would probably be a better choice for you since a ported subwoofer is louder than a sealed subwoofer when all other variables are equal. If you prefer a subwoofer that blends very well during those nightly music listening sessions and isn't overbearing, then a sealed subwoofer might be a better option. Like I said, this all boils down to what you, the listener, prefers, so make sure you purchase from a reputable dealer with a great return policy. During my music listening sessions is where I thought the KEF Q350s really shined. In my opinion, the KEF Q350's tonality leans on the warm side of neutral, whereas the tonality of the Focal Aria 906 is much brighter sounding. I felt the Kefs performed much better than the Focals during my music listening sessions because the tonality is much more neutral and to my liking. Again, this is all a personal preference, so if you like a brighter sounding speaker, then the Focals might be more to your liking. In my opinion, the trouble on the Q350 is laid back, smooth, and detailed. Kef uses an aluminum tweeter in the Q350, and for some reason, aluminum dome tweeters get a bad rap for sounding harsh but I think that is unwarranted here. I didn't hear any harshness from the Q350's tweeter during any of my long listening sessions, and I quite enjoyed my time with them. Another surprising revelation with these speakers is the bass output. 
Most people would think that since these are bookshelf speakers that the bass is going to be pretty weak, right? That wasn't my experience at all. The Q350s had enough bass to satisfy my bass needs, even in my large upstairs room with an open floor plan. As another comparison, I also have a set of Monitor Audio Bronze 100 speakers, which utilize an 8-inch woofer in them, and the bass from the Q350s is almost as strong as the bass from the Bronze 100s. That's impressive. So how do the Kef Q350s compare to their little brother, the Q150? Well, I used to own a pair of Kef Q150s, and while they were a phenomenal set of speakers for their size, they just didn't have the bass output that I was looking for from a set of main speakers. In my opinion, the Kef Q350s are more of everything that the Q150s offer. You get more soundstage, more imaging, and most of all, a lot more bass. The Q350s are one of the few bookshelf speakers that I can use in a 2.0 setup and be completely fine with the bass output in a small to medium sized room. Before I close out this review, I thought it would be cool to do a sound comparison between the Focal Aria 906 and the Kef Q350s. I'm down here in my main listening room with my Macintosh equipment and I just hooked up my uh, speaker comparison tool that I just got off of Amazon. It allows me to quickly compare the two speakers just by a flip of a switch without having to turn everything off and then reconnect them. So the configuration that I have set up for these speakers is it's in a 2.0 setup. The subwoofer is not hooked up. And what I'm trying to uh, illustrate here for you guys is I'm hoping that some of the brightness on the Focals will kind of come through on camera and you guys listen to, listen to this demo. I don't know if that's going to happen or not, but I'm going to give it a try. And uh, you know, after you guys listen to the two speakers, let me know what you think by commenting down below. So let's get started. Let me know what you think of the sound demo between the Kefs and the Focals. I'm curious to hear if these demos are helpful to my viewers or if I'm just wasting my time. I'm all ears if any of you know how to improve the sound quality from these sound demos. I'm using a Sony 4K camera and maybe a new microphone would be a worthwhile upgrade for these types of recordings. Simply put, I love my Kef Q350s, especially at the sale price of $499. In my opinion, the Kefs offer a very large sound stage for their size decent imaging, and pretty impressive bass response from a bookshelf speaker. There are not many bookshelf speakers that you can buy for $500 per pair that offer this kind of performance at such an affordable price. Whether you're watching movies or listening to two-channel audio, I don't think anyone would be disappointed with the performance that the Q350 has to offer. While I do love my speakers, there are some things that I think Kef can improve upon. Some of the things I didn't like about the Q350 include the damping inside the cabinet as well as the vinyl finish on the cabinet. In my opinion, two rolled up pieces of polyfill isn't sufficient damping for speakers that have an MSRP of $700.
and the fake walnut finish isn't too convincing up close. In comparison, the Monitor Audio Bronze 100, which is only $25 more per pair than the Cap Q350s, has a much nicer cabinet finish, as well as internal damping. Come on, Kef, you could do better. My next complaint is with the crossover. Kef is using a pretty crude first order crossover design that includes a metalized polypropylene film capacitor and a sand cast resistor on the tweeter circuit. For the woofer circuit, Kef is using a single iron core inductor. Just keep in mind that these types of parts used in the crossover are not out of the ordinary at this price point. All of the brands do it. The only difference is, these brands utilize more complex crossover networks with more components on them. I guess my thinking is since Kefi is utilizing such a simple crossover design that maybe, just maybe, there was enough in the budget for some nicer parts. With that being said, Kef did spend a little extra money on the tweeter circuit by using a polypropylene cap versus a polyester cap, so that is nice to see. However, I think swapping out these parts with much higher quality parts would yield a dramatic improvement in sound quality. Next year, I'll be starting my Kef Q350 upgrade path, which includes new damping material for the inside of the cabinet, new air core inductors for the woofer circuit, and a pair of Mundorf Evo caps for the tweeter circuit. I'm hoping these new parts will bring the Q350s to the next level without too much out-of-pocket expense. So make sure you subscribe if you'd like to follow along. Besides those minor complaints, I still love my Kef Q350s dearly. They are one of my favorite bookshelf speakers at this price point. In fact, I love them so much, I made a personal home for them in my bedroom system. Hopefully, this video will give you an idea of what to expect from the Kef Q350s. If you own a pair of these speakers, let me know what you think about them by leaving a comment down below. So long, and happy listening!